So we recently made our tiny shell here in assembly. If you type in help, then it will show the commands that we currently support. Echo is one of them where we can enter a string and then it will print it back to the terminal. We also have help itself. And then we have exit, which will exit the program. So everything is going pretty well, but there are some things that we can improve for sure. And one of them is the method of how we check what command came in. If we take a look at the code, we can see that we have the equivalent of a big if else chain. Well, right now there's only three, but we can imagine if we had 20 or 30 commands that we supported, that list would get pretty big. What we're going to do in this video is make a little bit of progress by turning it into a loop that will check some sort of data structure that we define dynamically what command has been entered by the user. If you copy and paste the code in the description, then that is the tiny shell program that we have. Don't worry about all this code if you haven't seen it before. All we really need to know is that once tokenize occurs, which turns the user's input into tokens, then that first command is going to be pointed to by tokens. So tokens at the zero offset at the start of tokens is going to be eight bytes that points to the starting address of the command entered. And we can see here that we compare it against exit, we can compare it against echo, and we compare it against help. All of this done explicitly and manually, and we want to get away from that and have it more efficient in a loop. So this last little part right here is when no command was recognized, then it just gives a little message that says that the command wasn't recognized. So in order to start kind of modifying this, I'm going to delete uh, these three here because we shouldn't need them after we're done. One loop should do everything. And the first thing that we really have to do here is build our data structure that will actually contain the command and the address of the handling function. So for example, if I undo that delete real quick, then we can see that if we found exit, then it's going to jump to exit. If it found echo, then it's going to jump to select echo. And if it found help, it's going to jump to select help. So we need to sort of remake this, but in a data structure instead of as actual code. So down here in the data segment, I'm going to make a new tag called commands. And I'm going to put a quad in there, which is eight bytes or a pointer, right? Because we're going to point to a string and then we're going to point to the function that handles that string's implementation. So the first one is going to be, let's say, echo. And echo, we have it already labeled as s command echo. So for string command echo. So string command echo will go here. Then we have a comma, which means we're going to have another quad uh, that comes right after. And we know that select dot echo is the handler for that command. And we see it up here, select dot echo. So we just need to write these out and tie it together. And what we're really doing here is we have a sort of structure or an object with two pointers, and we're making an array of them. So I'm going to do the next one, which is s command, let's say help, and we'll do select help. And then we have s command exit, and then we have exit. Now, the way I'm going to design this is we can figure out the count and just iterate the amount that we have in the array. But I'm going to add another one at the end, which is sort of our null terminator, we could say a null element in our array. And we know that when we reach the zero, then we've reached the end of our array. So that's how I'm going to approach it first. But there are many different ways to do this, of course. So now that we have all of our commands listed out in memory, we have the string pointer followed by a function pointer for the handler, we can go up here and get started. So let's delete now the current implementation. We're going to start after we tokenize. And the first thing that we have to do is sort of save the position of the current command because we're going to be going through that array. So we need something to keep track of our index. I'm going to use register 10. Let's load that first command. So it's going to take commands. And that first one, we know the first eight bytes after commands is the echo string, right? A pointer to the echo string. And then after this, we're going to be looping through. So I'm going to put a little tag here for loop. Command.loop should be fine. And the first thing that we want to check for is that null entry, right? If there is an empty array, then we want to stop immediately. So I'm going to move to rex r10, right? So r10 gets the address of commands. So it has the address of this position here. But then with the brackets moving it to rex, we're actually going to dereference it, grabbing the address of the first entry. And now we're going to compare rex to zero. So if that address that we pointed to at that first entry is zero, then we want to essentially jump to, I guess we'll say no command or command dot not found. We can make a tag 
for this section here. So I'm going to make this command dot not found. So we handle our zero case. Now, since we know it's not zero, meaning it points to what should be a string, we can now compare it to what was entered. And we know what was entered is going to be in tokens. So let's move to RDI tokens. And we're also going to dereference tokens. That's why we have the brackets. That's because tokens is its own list of all the strings that were entered. And we also need to dereference it. So tokens is a list of pointers. And we need to follow those pointers to the memory to grab the strings. So we're going to where tokens is. And then we're getting that address. And we're moving that into RDI. Then we need to move to RSI what's in REX, the address of the command that we're working on. And RDI and RSI are what we use in our string compare functions as the first two arguments. So after we have those two loaded, we could just call string compare. Now string compare is going to set REX to zero if they match. So we're going to compare REX to zero again, but now we're doing it for a different reason. Before we check to see if there was no string, now we're checking to see if string compare returned a zero. So if it is equal, or we could say if it is zero, so jump if equal, we're going to jump to command, let's say dot found. And we need to make that label now. So we'll put command dot found. And then in here, we can fill this in soon. So if it was not found, though, then it's going to fall through here. And we need to increase to the next command. Now we know that each command's entry is going to be eight bytes, right? A string pointer followed by eight bytes, a function pointer. So each entry is 16 bytes long. So we need to move R10 by 16 bytes forward to get to the start of the next entry. And after we do that, we should be able to just loop. So we could just jump to command dot loop. And now we'll start the cycle again. Now when we found a command, what we need to do is shift over, right? Let's say that we found echo, we need to shift by eight bytes, right? Skipping that string pointer and going to the function pointer, and then we can jump to it. So all we really have to do is we know that R10 at this point is going to be at the location of the string pointer. So we just need to shift it by eight. And now we know that R10 is pointing to the address that holds the function pointers address. So we need to dereference it. So let's move to REX. What's in R10. And then we can jump to REX. So we see these dereference operations because we have memory that holds addresses. And in order to access the address that's held at a memory position, we need to dereference it, we need to visit the memory position, and then grab the address that's stored there. So let's try this out. I think this should work. And let's click continue. And I'll put echo hello there. That seems to work. Help seems to work. I'll put something that doesn't work. Unsupported command that looks good. And exit and exit works well. So it's a relatively simple construct that we have here. The trickiest part are just knowing when to dereference or when to use addresses themselves. But since we're dealing with pointers, right, two pointers, then it's all about dereferencing. And we can simplify some of this. But you know, we're not really about optimization here. We're really about clarity. So I like to see that we increase it by eight, and then we dereference, but you could put them together, we could uh, add the eight and dereference it in one instruction, which is a lot more efficient here because the hardware is built uh, for this kind of thing. So let's try this again. And we are working. Ahoy there. And help. And, exit. and now that we have this working, I must highlight that we're actually not making the program much more efficient on the actual command like search because the system still needs to go through at worst every single instruction to find the one that we have. So imagine if we had hundreds of them, then every time it's going to go through every single string checking it, which is not the most efficient thing. So one thing that we'll do in the future, I don't know if it's next video, probably not. But one thing that we'll do is we'll make a hash table, uh, which is represented many times as a dictionary in higher level languages, where we can hash the input string and then go directly to the function handler without having to iterate through the entire array. And perhaps if there is a collision or two, we might have to do a couple jumps, but it will be much faster and much more deterministic. But I know that a lot of your fellow viewers are really itching to get into dynamic memory allocation and some of the other features that are in higher level languages or that are provided by the operating system. And they want to see how it's done in assembly. So I think we're going to shift a bit from the tiny shell, which we built out pretty well so far. There are all sorts of bugs, I'm sure, in it that we can encounter together and fix. I don't really rehearse this too much to try and keep it as natural as possible, where there are going to be bugs that are in there, and we're going to hopefully find them together and fix them. 
But for now, what we'll do is we'll move on to another little mini project. Uh, but just know that you can add on commands here, you can add functionality, and it will work pretty well. And when you do find those errors, let me know and we can uh, patch them together. Or if you fix anything, just let me know and we can update it for the group. But thanks very much for joining me as always. I appreciate your time. Uh, this has been really fun. And what we'll do next is hopefully get into memory. Now, I probably need to, to swap to a local system to use some more of those uh, kernel system calls that are provided. But I'll take a look and see what the simplest way is for us to move forward with uh, some more memory projects that we can do. So I look forward to doing that in the next video. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.